lots of changes to what's going to happen today in terms of the scoring system. A touchdown is worth six points for the offense. Defensively, though, five points for a turnover, 12 points for a turnover with a touchdown. So there are a lot of moving parts in the scoring system today, including four 10-minute quarters and a 10-minute halftime as well. We are just about set for kickoff. It will be Ben Sauls kicking it away and Rodney Hammond deep. The kickoffs will not be live today, so you're not going to see a ton in terms of returns. Sauls puts a leg into it and we are underway here in the blue and gold game. And Hammond makes his way to the 20 and we will start up shop from there well here is what every pit fan wants to see and obviously they've been looking for a quarterback since kenny pickett roger kovic comes in transfers in from boston college after three seasons not great numbers uh, the last couple years but was really good in 2020 battled some injuries and we talked about there in the open, Derek. Frank Signetti, their offensive coordinator, has really been impressed with the way he's been practicing, his poise, his leadership, all the things that you look for out of a quarterback. Hammond, the deep back here on a first and 10. And the end around above Means. And Means brings it across the 30-yard line, near the 33 where the stop is made by Philip O'Brien and Noah Bigelow. So a little trickeration to start the game. Offensively, you pick up the first down, and uh, they get a point for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't, it, it, this is not hockey. <laughs> there, it's one nothing. It's a, it's a very unique point system, but it allows the, the defense to have opportunities to score on, uh, on common plays as well. Jerkovic will slide to the shotgun this time with Hammond as the deep back. And they'll set up the screen. Out to the 35, near the 40, is Hammond, who's brought down by Elliot Donald. It's a great block by 61, Ryan Jacoby. A transfer from Ohio State on the outside, and a good cutback by Hammond. Nearly picks up the first down. Nick Lappy, the linebacker, had a shot at him there. Couldn't make the stop, and Hammond able to get things done. He's the leading returning rusher for this pit offense. Israel Banakanda getting set for the NFL. He had a tremendous year last year. As that snap getting away from Jerkovic, and that will bring the football back near the 31-yard line. So the defense... Well, that should be a, a sack, so two points for the defense, you'd think, right? Correct. Absolutely. I'd, I'd call it a sack. Yeah, sure, sure. If this, But remember, we, <laughs> Coach Narduzzi's the one yeah. putting up the points. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, the last two Saturday scrimmages that have taken place, they've been won by the defense. Daniel Carter making his first appearance. It's Jerkovic back to throw and he will get sacked. Samuel Okanlola with a stop. Yeah, you watch 17 here come off the right side. Just a great move inside on a double team. Zubovic tries to get his hands on him and a great job by Okanlola. Caleb Junko will head to the field to punt. Israel Polk back deep. Junko set the all-time record for a punt in the Sun Bowl, an 85-yarder against UCLA in the win for the Pitt Panthers. Polk waves it off as that ball will get touched up around the 31-yard line. 
We'll step out for a quick break. More from the blue and gold game in a moment. Yeah. Christian Vayer in at quarterback now for Pitt. He completes his first pass of the day. That's to the tight end Jake Renda for first down. And Dustin, an opportunity here for Vayer to show what he can do as a transfer. Yeah, the transfer comes in from Penn State. Just played a few games for the Nittany Lions and obviously they're looking for uh, a future after Phil Dracovic. And certainly there's still competition. I mean, it, it feels like Dracovic has the job won, but in that room, there's still a lot of competition. And you know, Christian Vayer has shown a lot of ability. Remember, just been here a short time, trying to pick up this offense and certainly a, a more of a pro style offense here with, with Frank Signetti. Three wide receivers sent for Vayer, throws left. And that catch is made by Lamar Seymour, the freshman with another first down. So Bayer, hey look, he said coming in, he's like, I didn't come here to, to sit, right? I want to play. No question. They've got like, uh, really three or four quarterbacks behind Djokovic that, that all can compete, including Nate Yarnell, who played a little bit last year. Ty Diefenbach, who we'll see a little bit later as well. And you mentioned there Lamar Seymour, the, the freshman who just got here. This kid's can, going to compete for some playing time at the wide receiver position. Seymour is out wide to the left here on a first and ten. Bayer. There's another catch made by Renda. He's stopped by Donovan McMillan, the strong safety. So far, Bayer has the offense moving in his first possession. And we saw the first offense go against the two defense. Now we're seeing the second offense go against the, the first string defense to this point. Two tight ends set this time and some movement up front. A host of bodies moving for Pitt and it's Dorian Ford, the left guard. Take a point off the board. Yes. <laughs> Penalties also take things back. Minus one for a penalty. Blue with the early lead here in the first quarter. Again, 10 minute quarters here today. Seymour out wide to the left again for Vayer. Vayer fires over the middle, it's caught inside of the 20 yard line that's Jake McConaughey who the coaching staff has been very happy with here through spring practices now uh, this is just a great round great throw the base defense for the Pitt Panthers is quarters coverage and that is a quarters beater that post right down the middle and a great throw by Vayer and boy McConaughey he's a He's a team favorite. They, they love this guy. A walk-on who's just kind of done everything for this team and has had a really strong spring, and they kind of expect him to, to be in the mix in the fall. Trips out wide this time for Vayer. Floats one towards the end zone, and that is incomplete. Wanted to go to Seymour again. Boy, nearly picked off by Marquez Williams, the cornerback. Grinding coverage as well. Safety, field safety. That's one area they feel really good about here, Derek, is that secondary. They've got a lot of depth coming back, especially at the cornerback position. They've got really three guys they feel like can be starters. And between their, their, their safeties and linebackers, they feel like they've got a strong back seven. Second and 10. They put Seymour in motion. It's a screen. And Derek Davis with the reception as Davis has his progress impeded. He stopped at the 12 as Philip O'Brien in the mix for the defense. That's a great job by the, the Mike backer, Shane Simon. 32, the transfer from Notre Dame. Expect him to have a big year. Sniffs out that screen and makes the tackle.
bring about third and six from the 12 yard line. Bear joined by Davis, the LSU transfer. Bear to the 10, to the five. Davis making his way towards the end zone and he is in. Derek Davis scores the first touchdown of the day in the blue and gold game. Uh, this is just all Derek Davis. Nothing open down the field. Just take the check down. Davis gets to the sideline and somehow keeps his balance. Tiptoes right into the end zone. Terrific balance and concentration by Derek Davis, who Pitt fans are really excited to see. Remember, he just transferred in from LSU. And they need depth at running back. That's a great play. Saul's on for the extra point. And he connects. So the Panthers find the end zone first. Derek Davis, your first look at him getting in the end zone. 8-3. Akershire Stadium in Pitt Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's the blue and gold spring game. And an 8-3 lead for the gold. Sauls will kick it away. And Hammond will let this one sail over his head and out of the end zone. We'll see Phil Dracovic for the second time today. And Dustin, let's go back to that Bayer possession. I mean, he looked pretty strong, good arm. Uh, yeah, we were even talking about it during the commercial break. He looked really good. Precise, accurate, got him in the end zone, of course, and, you know, it'll be interesting. Coach did tell us yesterday, yeah, it's, it's Jerkovic's, Jerkovic's job probably to lose, but there's still a lot of competition and still a lot of time left before that Wofford opener on September 2nd. Daniel Carter, the deep back, and they'll go play action. Jerkovic will air it out long for Means, and that is incomplete. Broken up deep. As Stefan Hall with the breakup. Yeah, you can see the arm strength here of Dracovic getting that football all the way down. Nearly a great play, but really a better play, as you mentioned there, by, by Hall coming in there at the last second, forcing the, the PBU. All the free safety there to get back in time to stop what would have been a huge completion to Bub Means. By the way, no Panate Mumfield today. He's out with a hand injury for this pin offense. Second down, the reception made near the 30-yard line by Israel Polk. And that'll bring up third down on the way for this pit offense that, you know, we haven't talked too much about the rushing game, but Israel Banacanda moving on to the NFL. That's a big loss for them potentially in the backfield, but talking to the coaches, they felt like they had a crew that could fill the void. Well, and, and really, you know, Rodney Hammond was supposed to play a bigger role last year. Early in the season, kind of twisted his ankle, wasn't quite himself really until the end of the year. And in that Sun Bowl was just, was just phenomenal and was the MVP of that game. Sebo Flemister into the game now as Dracovic floats one downfield. It's incomplete. Trying to get Polk again. Interesting to see the kind of philosophy here in this game, taking some shots with Dracovic uh, down the field, testing out the defense, and obviously Randy Bates' defense plays a lot of that man coverage on the outside, so some opportunities to test those corners. And if you've followed much of spring practice so far, there's been some battles between the wide receivers and corners in practice, and we're seeing some of that on display today. Jay Wabuko back to receive. By the way, three and out. That's a point for the defense. And that punt will roll out of bounds just shy of the 41. Going back to the last drive, Christian Veyer got things out to a positive start, Dustin. Yeah, he did, and, and I like the way they kind of eased him into it. Some quick, easy throws, 
to the flat, taking his check downs. Great job on this post pattern to Renda down the middle, and then, of course, the touchdown. Derek Davis. And now it looks like we're going to see a new quarterback here. Derek, we're going to see uh, Nate Yarnell. Yes, the only quarterback on the roster who's taking us taking a snap last year for the Panthers. So Nate Yarnell started one game last year against Western Michigan. TJ Harvison will join him. It's a quick play action throw and the reception made by Seymour. It's Javon McIntyre making the tackle there. And Yarnell, again, in the start last year, it was a win against Western Michigan. And that's the kind of game that gave this coaching staff a lot of confidence in Yarnell. They spoke highly of his leadership yesterday in our meeting with the coaching staff. And Yarnell now will try to roll that into the spring game here today. Yeah, in, in fact, you know, Frank Sinead, the offensive coordinator, said that Yarnell may, might actually be the the backup right now as that pass is batted down. Sean Fitzsimmons yeah. showing the hands. Randy Bates was loving talking about Sean Fitzsimmons yesterday. He said he's just, he's just Pittsburgh tough. I mean, the guy is just a really... And he said, it, he said this in a positive way. He said he's a dirtbag. Yes. And if you follow <laughs> yes, baseball and, 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 you know, some football, uh, that that is... Uh, positive term it's yes. not a negative it's, yes. it's the guy's a nasty dude that you want on your defensive line red shirt freshman as now it's third and long a third and 12 here Yarnell sets up a screen has it complete keeping it alive though is Harvison and Harvison is finally stopped at the 40 yard line as McIntyre there on the play yet again it's a pretty good effort by the, the freshman Harbison, who's had himself a really nice camp, just arrived in January and shows a little wiggle. You can see this guy's got some ability. In for 2,000 yards, a senior out of Carrollton, Georgia. Junko on to punt. Good kick. That's a good one. Fielded back at the one, heading into the end zone now, making his way out near the five-yard line. As once again, Wabuko with the move. When we come back, we'll take a look at the 2022 pit season. For UCLA. Start of the second quarter, Jerkovic back in again at quarterback. As Flemister is stopped by Jimmy Scott on the first offensive play of quarter number two. And Dustin, you take a look at last season. They had to do that with three different quarterbacks playing at different points of the year. Well, that's what's so amazing about the, the job that they did. And, and we give a lot of credit to Coach Narduzzi and having players ready to go, having the depth ready to go, putting guys in position to have success. And certainly the one thing I thought was interesting is that that Sun Bowl game, they had eight opt-outs, right? So that game kind of gave them a feel of what it's going to be like this season. A lot of these players got some experience and and they won that game against a really talented UCLA team. Carter Johnson with the catch. And a tackle made by Big Low. As Johnson... One of the four tight ends available today, and that's obviously an area where Pitt would like to see more production offensively this season. Gavin Bartholomew, one of the tight ends are counting on this season. He is a scratch today. Not available. Third and six. Dracovic gets the shotgun snap, pressure, but a wide open Bub Means near midfield, an easy catch for Means. Good blitz pick up there by the pit offense. Yeah, really good job by Sebo Flemister 
uh, the running back transfers from Notre Dame, picks up the blitz, buys Jerkovic a little bit more time in the pocket and somehow finds means wide open for the first down. Jerkovic so far, nice start for him, five of seven for 40 yards. And the fifth year senior has his team at midfield. Hammond back in deep. It'll be an inside handoff to Miles Alston. Alston in deep trouble. Alston dancing the tightrope along the sideline, far side. Scott and O'Brien there trying to track him down. be a loss of one officially on the play. Well, that was a terrific effort just to nearly get back to the line of scrimmage. That, that play was busted up in the backfield by O'Brien who had him for a, 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 you know about a six yard loss. So that was a great effort. And again with the point system it's a point for a loss on a play. Throw downfield caught. Means inside of the 35 down near the 32, so Bub Means continuing his strong play as Big Low with the stop. Bub Means, a great size, 6'2", 215 pounds, goes up and catches this in between four defenders, it looked like. That's just athleticism. Uh, Pitt fans got to love to see that. If you're looking for that number one receiver, somebody to replace Jared Wayne, and he's having himself a nice start to this game. Absolutely. He had 84 yards in the win against UCLA in the Sun Bowl as Hammond up the middle, inside of the 30, down near the 28. Buddy Mack with the tackle. Offensively last season for Pitt, it was definitely a mixed bag because of the passing game, really not able to find their sea legs throughout the course of the season. Yeah, it was certainly a tough year for them. You mentioned the quarterbacks and all that. All that and the good thing about this pit team is that they're, they're really balanced. They're just a tough football team. They find ways to win games that are close in their defense. Uh, Randy Bates done a really good job with that defense as they were uh, right around 20th in the nation in total defense to end the season. Second and six. It's Daniel Carter this time with the carry. Carter moves his way inside of the 25 yard line near the 23. That'll be good enough for the first down for the Panthers. And again, we mentioned a little bit about it earlier with Abanacanda. He was a major part of the offense. He had over 1,800 yards of total offense, 21 total touchdowns on the season. So clearly while... The, the passing game did struggle at times. Banacanda really helped a great deal in that rushing attack. Yeah, 183 yards a game on the ground. That, that wants to be, they want that to be their bread and butter. And there you see right now, a really terrific run right there up the middle by Daniel Carter. Carter's got some speed. You can see it's a really good block and a cut right in the center of your screen. I'm gonna put Buddy Mack on some skates right there. Abe Ibrahim with the tackle there to prevent Carter from getting a touchdown. That'll set up a first and goal from the five. Jerkovic will set it up this time from the shotgun. Good penetration by that pit front defensively. Ibrahim with the tackle along with Okunlola. Yeah, Ibrahim, for 52, just shoots his gun right off the outside and gets in there for the loss. Second and goal this time from the four. Once again, Carter deep. Carter again, 
this time pushes his way across the goal line for six. So Daniel Carter slipping through a Del Gaudio tackle to get into the end zone. Beautiful run, great blocking up front. Carter's not even really touched until he gets into the end zone. So now you got two touchdowns by running backs. Derek Davis on the, the swing pass, and now Carter up the middle. Puts the goal up. 15 7. Franco Fernandez and Joe on with the extra point to make it a 16 7 ball game. Well, you wondered if Pitt was going to find themselves some running backs. They've got a couple. They got a couple touchdowns here as the gold's on top. Dot com slash watch. It'll be Sauls kicking it away here once more in a 16 to 7 ball game in the second quarter. Hammond across the 20 to the 30 to the 40. Hammond on his way. Untouched to the end zone. Rodney Hammond to the house. We haven't talked a ton about special teams, but no. Hammond looked pretty sleek here. He, he did, and, and someone's got to get a hand on him. And he, I mean, he really is untouched all the way to the end zone, and certainly they were not going to go live with any of their special teams, but they're, they're going to let him return until somebody at least tags him off like a flag football or something like that, you know, touch football. And there, untouched, right to the end zone. And really, the gold putting it all over the blue. Ben Sauls on for the extra point. So Hammond can show the ability to run the football. And obviously now, with an opportunity throughout the season, perhaps, to be an impact player in the special teams department. The Saul's extra point splits the uprights. And Hammond taking care of business here in the blue and gold spring game. 23-7 advantage to the NFL draft. We mentioned the Sun Bowl and the opt-outs. They had eight opt-outs in that game. A lot of that had to do with the NFL draft and players trying to get prepared for that. There's no question. I mean, th this has been a, a, really a powerhouse for you know, putting players in the National Football League. And the thing that's interesting is just a really good run here on the outside by Flemister is a lot of these guys come here to, to pit as, you know, three-star recruits. And they take players, they develop them, and they turn them into really good football players. You'll see in the rankings, they're not always the highest in terms of the recruiting rankings, although the next year they get a good class coming in. But they've, they've just been a machine putting folks into the National Football League, and you're going to see maybe seven, eight more this year. By the way, no kickoff to set up that last offensive possession, or this current offensive possession, I should say. It's Narduzzi's world. We're just living yeah. in it. <laughs> that's, that's correct. Veer back at quarterback. He's got trips to his right on a second and five. Veer slings one out to his right, but Polk and Veer are not on the same page. As we get a look at the recruiting ranks, Pitt there at the, the bottom of that list, Dustin. But when we talked to the coach yesterday, Coach Narduzzi, you know, they know that they are into player development. So they're not necessarily going to have the, the four-star guys mm -hmm. littered throughout the program. Well, and they also recruit a certain area of the country, right? I mean, they want to get the core of their football team from Western PA, from Northeast Ohio, Youngstown, Akron, you know, kids like that, tough kids who understand what it's like to, to grow up here in the blue-collar town. And the kids play like it. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a culture that they've developed here at Pitt. Timeout call by the offense. And they will get together both sides to talk shop here with the score 23-7.
gold with the advantage as we head down the home stretch here of quarter number two. Thanks for joining us here today. Derek Jones and Dustin Fox with you. And Dustin, what are some of your early takeaways from what you've seen here? Well, to me, the, the number one thing that I've seen is they've got a plethora of talent at running back. Uh, we've seen four or five guys who've made plays from the running back position. Um, from what we've seen from Jerkovic, uh, looks pretty solid. Uh, Veyer, the backup, has looked really good, except for that last throw, which I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that was probably on Israel Polk, the freshman who's just a little bit on, on the wrong page there. But no, I mean, the offense has looked, looked really strong. Now remember, you, you, you're talking about you're going one offense versus two defense, two offense versus one defense, things like that. So it's not totally indicative of, of how the teams are playing, but I, I've been impressed with especially the skill positions. And one other player, too, is Bub Means. That kid looks like he's going to be a player. Bear fires, and that is incomplete. Wanted to hit Carter Johnson, the tight end. Braylon Lovelace back in coverage. And that'll set up fourth down here. And a punt on the way from Jeff York. Now, York's the transfer from Elon, who is going to be competing for the starting job. They had some issues putting last year. So he's practicing his, practicing his golf swing there. <laughs> Going to get a quick, quick nine up. in this afternoon <laughs> if the rain holds off. Okay. A low line drive as Wabuko scoops it up. Makes his way out of bounds near the 40-yard line. And the punting last year for this pit team, th that was something that was a concern without a doubt for the coaching staff. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty much by committee. I mean, Cam Guess and, and Sam uh, Vanderhaar were the punters last year. And, and obviously, Junko and, and York seemed to be getting most of the reps here in spring ball. Um, May see some of them competing, but right now I think it's between Junko and Yerk uh, for the job. And that wasn't the best punt from Yerk right there, but you know Junko had that Sun Bowl record punt of 85 yards back in December. Yarnell back into the game, play action, and the reception made quickly by Josh Altsman. As Altsman brings it across the 45 to the 46-yard line off the stop by McIntyre. The punting, and you can see from the ACC ranks, the average of 38.4 worst in the ACC last year. As my old coach, Jim Tressel at Ohio State, used to say the punt is the most important play in football. He told us that the first day of camp, and we were like, what? <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Flip the field, hidden yardage. Got to be able to kick the ball. Yarnell with another completion, this time to Jake Renda. He's pushed out of bounds by McIntyre. And, you know, we, we get caught up so much in talking about the quarterbacks and the skill guys and defenders, the special teams. You can't take that for granted. And you're right, Coach Tressel, that point made a lot of sense. The folks. In Columbus, used to call it trestle ball, which meant, you know, play good defense, live to fight another down, punt the football, make field goals, hold your opponents to field goals in the red zone, things like that. That's the key to winning. That's a wide open throw. And it's Israel Polk, the freshman, out of bounds. As Marquez Williams in coverage there, trying to track down Polk. And a nice opportunity here for the offense and Coach Narduzzi to get a look at their offense kind of in that end-of-half situation. Buck three to go. They're nearing the red zone. Plenty of time. Got a couple timeouts left here. Let's see how Yarnell handles this situation. First and 10 with the ball at the 25-yard line. Yarnell will set up a screen. The reception made by Davis. And Davis has stopped shy of the 25-yard line near the 26. As McIntyre there in the mix once more. You think Frank Signetti wants to work on the screen game in the scrimmage? We have seen, seen about six of them. <laughs> yes, we have seen that a lot. 
so far here today as another timeout is called. Gold with two timeouts remaining. 24-9 ball game. And you know, you're talking to Coach Signetti yesterday, and you, you can get the sense that, you know, they're still in the, the install phase mm -hmm. of what's going on as they get set for the season. Yeah, coaches keeps kind of kind of set in their ways. You know, Narduzzi lets Signetti do his thing, and he tells him, because, you know, the defense won the first couple of scrimmages. And I asked him, like, does that bother you at all? He's like, Coach Signetti is install one, install two, install three, go through everything, and he wants to get everything put in here by the 15th practice, which is today. And uh, they feel like they've done a good job, and he's not too worried about it. He says, listen, we don't play games until September. So now is the opportunity, now's the time to get all these things, plays put in, especially when you've got new quarterbacks and a lot of new faces on the offensive side. Yarnell running out of time, and they blow the play dead with the pressure and a sack on the play as Bam Brema there to cause the play to stop. Just a twist on the inside, and there's just nowhere for Yarnell to go, and that's going to be points for the blue. Second timeout called by the gold. One timeout remaining for them. Two for blue with 48 seconds left to go before halftime. Ten-minute quarters today. Have about a ten-minute halftime, and now faced with a third and 18. Well, we, we talked about Coach Signetti. We'll have to dig in his bag of tricks here on a third and long. I bet it's going to be a screen. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. Or, or just a draw play, something just to try and pick up five, six yards, you know, to get yourself in better position to kick the field goal here. Well, look, here's the thing. They do, as we've seen today, have backs that can catch the football out of the backfield. Five defensive backs this time on a third and 18. Davis is deep for Yarnell. Yarnell rolls out, fires downfield, and that is almost intercepted by Brandon George. Man, there's really good pressure off the outside by Bengali Kamari. Kamara, excuse me, number 11. That creates the pressure, and somehow, you'll watch 11 right here, forces Yarnell outside the pocket, nearly intercepted, but a great job defensively by Kamara. And we will see a field goal by Ben Sauls. Sauls was one of the heroes of the Sun Bowl. He had five field goals, including the game winner in that contest. Kick on the way, plenty of distance, but it is no good. So Sauls can't connect on the 51-yard attempt. That was his long last year against Duke. So I didn't, I'll tell you, a win like that can really put a lot of momentum into a team going into an offseason. That was a big victory for, for the Panthers. Yarnell takes a knee, and that will close out action here as we get set for halftime in just a few moments. As these two teams, or excuse me, two sides, have been back and forth here today. And what is a 24 to 11 lead for the gold in the Pittsburgh Blue and Gold Spring Game coming up, Jordan Cornette and the ACC Huddle Crew We'll be talking about the 2023 ACC season after these messages. Spring game, it is a 24 to 11 lead for the gold over the blue. Derek Jones and Dustin Fox with you. Dustin, that first half, take us through some of your thoughts out of what you saw. Well, I, I was impressed with, with really the way all three quarterbacks played in that first half. And we, we talked about, you asked me some of the things that stood out to me. I, I, I thought the running backs, uh, the four that we saw, and really five we saw were, were terrific. And take a look at some of the throws. This is Vier, and he finds his, his running back on the outside there. That, of course, is the transfer. 
from LSU, Derek, D Derek Davis. Finds his way to the end zone, then an another rushing attack by Daniel Carter, another one of the talented running backs. And then how about Hammond? We know he's a really good running back, but shows the speed and versatility and may, he may have found himself a role on special teams here with, with a really long kickoff return, untouched to the end zone. Hammond will be back for the kickoff here when we start the second half. Six possessions for the offense in the first half, 187 yards of total offense. Defense was busy throughout that first half with a couple of sacks. And Christian Vare, six of nine, 74 yards with a touchdown pass. Meanwhile, McIntyre busy for him on the defensive side with six tackles. Hammond across the 20 to the 25. Not so much luck this time on the return. And if you're just joining us, the game rules a little bit different than what you're accustomed to. For the offensive scoring, six points for a touchdown. The traditional point after, worth a point, but a first down also worth a point as well. The defensive scoring, five points for a turnover, 12 points for a turnover that leads to a touchdown. Three and out, and a tackle for a loss as well. Each results in a point. Two points for a sack or a safety. Also, some points taken away for selfish penalties, including a personal foul as well. Ty Diefenbach into the game. It's a pitch to TJ Harvison. And back getting his first action of the day. And again, you know, we expected to see a multitude of quarterbacks. Dustin, what are your thoughts here on Deepen back? Well, he's a young kid. I mean, he's just a freshman. And I, I think they're excited about his his ability, his size, and all that stuff. The intangibles, he's he's got it all. I mean, just I'm I'm down here on the field now, by the way. We made a little transition here <laughs> at uh, at halftime. I'm gonna try to get some interviews for you guys. Um, down here on the sidelines, but I'm, I'm taking a look at Diefenbach, and I'm like, man, this is a big kid. Good-looking kid for a freshman, and I think he's got a bright future. Harvison eaten up that time in the backfield by Sean Fitzsimmons, who is active once again in the backfield as the Pennsylvania native has made a couple of nice defensive plays in this game. It'll be a third and 12 for Diefenbach and the offense. And some movement up front. Take a point off the board. The false start against Isaiah Montgomery. So Montgomery costing the gold team a point. As the clock continues to move here in the third quarter, Derek Jones and Dustin Fox with you. As Dustin talked about, he's down on the field in the second half. We'll have some pretty cool stuff headed your way. We'll hear from some very special guests as well. It's a third and 17, but it's going to change because we've got another penalty here. Bengali Kamara caught offsides. So that will be a point away from the defense. So the blue losing a point after the gold lost a point for their false start. Diefenbach stepping up and he will be sacked. Nate Temple got there first to get to Diefenbach. So two points for Blue. Caleb Junko will make his way onto the field to punt here on fourth down. Israel Polk back to return this punt here by Junko. 
Pretty good kick by Junko. Sends Polk back near his 18. Near side out of bounds, near the 30 yard line. When we come back, we've got a very special guest, Aaron Donald, will join us when we return. Yeah, one of the best players in the National Football League, three time defensive player of the year, and of course, Super Bowl champion, Aaron Donald. How's it feel to be back in Pittsburgh? I feel good. Anytime, you know, back home and, you know, get to come down and, and see the, the young guys ball, um, it's, it's a good day. So, now, I know you make your, your home here in the off season, so Pittsburgh means a lot to you, right? Yeah, well, you know, born and raised here, you know, helping mold me to who I am. So, you know, every off season, I always come back and, you know, trying to get my work back at Pitt and, and you know, train around people that, you know, got me to where I'm at. So, I was telling you before we came on, I, I remember watching you at the Senior Bowl. And people are like, he's undersized. I'm like, this dude is a monster. And I, I'm like, this guy will be a beast in the NFL. Did you know that you'd have the type of career that you did when you entered the NFL? Um, no, I didn't. You know, I, I, I knew I would have some success, but I never imagined the things that I would be able to accomplish and, and, and you know, do in this league in, a, in such a short amount of time. But, you know, hard work pay off and just working and um, doing what I need to do to just get myself better and focus on what I got to do to help my team to win. You know, a lot of things came with that, so. You know, obviously winning the Defensive Player of the Year three times is amazing, an individual award, but winning a Super Bowl, that had to, had to be kind of the, the cherry on top, right? It ain't nothing like that. The, all the individual accolades, it's amazing, accomplished, it's a blessing, but to win that ultimate goal and, and, and be a world champion, the best team, the last team standard, there's nothing like it, nothing like it at all. So you're here at the spring game. We're, t we're talking a little pit football, talking some NFL. How much do you pay attention to the pit football team during the regular season when you have the opportunity to watch them? I try to watch as much as I can. You know, obviously being on the West Coast, we don't always get the game. So um, every time I can watch a game and sit down and watch it, I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in for sure. So your nephew is on the roster as well. And uh, he wears 94, right? Okay, so that's, that's a number very similar to you, right? 97, close enough, right? So what have you seen of your nephew so far? He's made some plays today. Yeah, he, he's getting better. You know, he, he definitely, you know, to see where he was, to where he was last year, to where he's at now, it's like night and day. You know, I see the improvement. I see him when I come to the to the practice. I see him making plays, making them big plays, got that excitement. So um, he has all the right, right, right questions. He's always calling me, um, sending me his film to watch. So, um, you know, he, he got the mindset to want to be great. He's just got to keep working, so. What do you think about the job Coach Narduzzi's done here? He's been here since 2015. You know, the last two seasons, really since he's been here, they've second most wins to Clemson in the ACC. So it's a pretty impressive job that Coach has done. He's doing a great job. You know, so it's about winning, obviously, and, he, and he's doing that. And um, he's going to continue to do that. So, you know, um, me being an alumni and now just a Pitt fan, um, it, you love to see it. So. Do you keep in contact much with, with ex-players from Pitt in the league and when you see him during the games? Obviously, DeMar Hamlin's here as well. We know his situation. We'll try to talk with him in a little bit. But you talk to the, the, the Pitt alum quite frequently? Yeah, we, I, I try to keep in contact with some guys and, you know, de definitely guys that I played with, and, um, you know, that, that came out with me for sure. So, All right, so last question. Uh, how many more years are you going to play? Um, I don't know. We're going to see, though. You know, we're we going to go. We're going to go. We're just going to worry about this year right now and see what happens from there. So, Aaron Donald, thanks, buddy. Back at Akershire Stadium here for the Pitt Spring game. Gold all over. The blue, 24-18. Down here on the field. And I'm, I've noticed, guys, that DeMar Hamlin, who's here, comes back quite often. He, he's actually on the defensive sideline, the blue sideline. And he's got a headset on and a play sheet. So I'm not sure if he's actually calling the defensive calls or just listening to the calls. But either way, it's pretty cool to see uh, a famous alum taking part in really fun day for these kids and that that's so cool to be able to see of course yes the, the, the story of Damar Hamlin so well known as a member of the Buffalo Bills and what he went through last year and it's awesome to see him in great spirits here on the sideline and and hey if you're a player how cool is that to have Damar Hamlin on the sideline kind of helping things along defensively no, that's amazing I used to love it when I was in school and the alum that You'd watch play on Sundays, would come back to games, and be on the sidelines, and you'd be looking over there and be like, man, I used to watch that guy growing up, and certainly everyone knows the, the story of DeMar and really the, the miracle that he's even here today is uh, just amazing. The walk on Eli Kasanovich in at quarterback. And the handoff to Derek Davis. Davis gets stopped by Hayes after a limited game. 
a third and long on the way. Third and 12 to be exact as we start up play in the fourth quarter. Uh, what, do you, what do you think DeMar is cooking up there defensively here? The defense has been uh, working here pretty hard. Well, listen, it's 24-18, right? You got to get points. You got to get off the field. You got to try to get sacks. So if I'm DeMar Hamlin, uh, I'm, I'm getting greedy here. I'm, I'm bringing some pressure, especially on this fourth and long. Hasanovich, and it's a handoff to Davis, and Davis gets bottled up at the 19. A.J. Woods, one of the first there to stop. Yeah, that's a great job of the middle by that defensive front. And you kind of get the sense here that um, as this thing winds down, Derek, Coach Narduzzi probably just wants to get out of here helping. <laughs> been a pretty productive day especially for this offense well when we talked to him yesterday coach Narduzzi and said hey what do you hope to get out of this game I mean and actually all the coaches said this health was pretty much the immediate talking point yes you have a long time to go before the start of the season but Dustin you don't want anything to, to throw this effort sideways and the progress you've made throughout the spring. No, it's the only thing you care about. And you've gotten through 14 practices, relatively healthy. You get to this game. You want to get out of this with, with no injuries, which you just cross your fingers and pray and hope that you can. And uh, they're about eight and a half minutes away. So the three and out gives a point over to the blue side to make it a five-point game now with 8.35 remaining. It's Ty Diefenbach back in at quarterback. Follow the snap. Able to get it back, oh, and that's it. intercepted. This could be a pick six. Philip O'Brien. And DeMar Hamlin's chasing him into the end zone. Into the end zone <laughs> for a touchdown along with DeMar Hamlin. A pick six for the defense. Great read by O'Brien. Broke easy on that one. He intercepts Diefenbach, who was looking for Jake McConaughey on the play. And it goes the other way to give the blue squad the lead. You know, Brian's expected to have a, a really vital role in this defense this year. Saul's on for the extra point. It is an eight point lead now. Philip O'Brien with the pick six to give the blue squad the lead. And how about this play? O'Brien on the return. There's DeMar Hamlin almost <laughs> running stride for stride with him at one point. And what a great moment as a part of this blue spring football game. And Philip O'Brien, as you just heard with Dustin, so fired up at his opportunity to be able to, to get something done here as we'll have a penalty on the run, by the way. I will say that um, that little shower that Philip got, Yeah, I got a little Remnants of it felt good. Yeah. It's hot down here, man. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's this is not the worst day to have that take place. No, nah, I and mean, there were there were showers in the forecast, and this has just been an absolutely gorgeous, perfect day for football. Instead, you got the the water bottle version of it. <laughs> Harvison off the left side. Know, Brian was fired up, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, look, the defense obviously takes a lot of pride. In, in what they do in general, but you get the sense, look, there've been some scraps in the, the practices between the offense and the defense, and that intensity, the defense has brought that here today. The pit defense last season, number one against the run, they've been one of the top run defenses in the ACC over the last few years. And the, the defense, one of the big reasons we talked about that run towards the back end of the season, they made some timely plays, of course. 
second in red zone defense, which is huge. The sacks, impressive as well. And the third down percentage conversion, best in the ACC last season. And Dustin, defensively, we've talked so much about the, the offense, but defensively, that's going to be a big part of their success as well. Uh, you always got to stop the run. Uh, first and foremost, and we, we mentioned it, you, you, you replaced four starters on that defensive line. That's going to be tough. A lot of guys going to the National Football League. But so far this spring, and again, it's just spring football, but the defense has played really well. Harvison on the carry across the 35 to the 36 gets tackled by Fitzsimmons. As a first down picked up on the play. We'll see Jake Frantel into the game for the first time today. So we have seen just about nearly every quarterback here today so far on this roster. I think they all, have we seen David Lynch yet? We've seen everybody. We we have oh, not. that ball's on the ground. That's that's gonna be a turnover. And it will go the other way. So the fumble recovered by Jimmy Scott. Bad exchange there on the snap. Well, Derek, when you have your seventh string quarterback in the game who probably hasn't taken a lot of reps and not a lot of snaps under center during the spring, those things tend to happen. Franto and B.J. Williams can't connect on the snap. And you're right, just so many different bodies in a quarterback. Eventually, you might have that kind of thing pop up. And we mentioned the turnovers today, remember, when that ball gets turned over, I mean, that's essentially a five-point play at least, depending on the play's outcome. And as Philip O'Brien found out, with his pick six, it's a 12-point swing. Yeah, this was a 24-18 game five minutes ago. Pick six is huge. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Frantel still in. And it's Harvison to the 34-yard line. Donovan McMillan, the strong safety. And for the tackle, Harvison getting plenty of work here in the second half. Harvison heading off. As Derek Davis will spell him on a second and eight. Pitt averaged 183 yards per game rushing the football, which was fourth in the ACC. Frantel scrambling, and he will head out of the bounds. The quarterback is not live today, so no hits on the guys in the red jerseys. It's a little different when September comes around and you're not wearing a red jersey, and all of a sudden you got live bullets at you, so it's a little easier for these quarterbacks to feel comfortable in the pocket sitting back there and when you're not going to get hit. That looked like a broken play there. Yeah. Well, he showed some athleticism. Got outside the pocket. Showed some speed. There's big low there defensively to try to keep step with Frantel. Now a third and ten. Harbison who's back into the game. Not much. And there's Ibrahim and Isaiah Neal combining for the tackle. So fourth down, we'll see if the offense will stay on the field. It looks like they will. Three receivers set on the way. Harvison takes the handoff, spins towards the 30, and a penalty marker down. And 
again, that will cost somebody a point. Ooh, personal foul face oh, mask against the defense. So that will be a first down. And this will keep the drive alive. So the personal foul, by the way, that's not a minus one. That's a minus three points. Well, the offense on the move. So the goal team's going to get two points there, Derek. And now the, I think maybe Narduzzi's putting his offense in a position to make this thing interesting. I believe so. Yeah, it's, an, it's now an eight-point game. Like I said, this is Narduzzi's world. <laughs> It's a first and 10 following the face mask penalty from the 14 yard line. Frannel will keep it and runs to the end zone for a touchdown. So Jake Frannel receiving a key block from Trevor Faulkner gets into the end zone. And Frantel showing that athleticism to the edge to get in. I was wondering if they decide to maybe go for two, but they're going to bring out the the PAT unit. Saul's on for the extra point, so no two-point try here. And Saul's connects. It's a one-point game in the blue-gold scrimmage. Jake Frannel, the seventh quarterback of the day, showing the wheels. One-point lead. The walk-on, Jake Frannel, scoring on a touchdown run to make it a one-point game. The schedule coming up for Pitt it will begin on September 2nd with Wofford. And then one of the interesting games they'll have this season, November 11th, they'll take on Syracuse. That game will be played at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. So a very interesting schedule this year for Pitt. North Carolina in the mix as well. Of course, West Virginia, that game will have a lot of interest as well. They played in a fantastic game in the early portion of last season. Dustin, when you take a look at that schedule, what sticks out to you? I think there's some great matchups early in the season. I mean, that Cincinnati game the second week of the year, you got West Virginia, that's going to be tough. It's going to be, I mean, those are going to be some big time nationally televised games for the Panthers. And, and again, it's going to be an opportunity for Phil Dracovic, who's most likely going to be the starting quarterback, to kind of show the nation that he's the quarterback of the future here. Hammond back for the return, and he will pretty much stay put with 2.31 left to go. We've got a one-point game. Question is, who's going to be the, the quarterback for this drive? And it looks like we're going to see David Lynch. Are the final quarterback on the roster, David Lynch, <laughs> the freshman. <laughs> so walk on. The final piece to the quarterback puzzle today. Yes. We have now seen seven. Every quarterback on the roster. Yes, seven quarterbacks today with Lynch's appearance and some movement up front. It will be a false start. And yeah, they're going to get 58. I mean, Dustin, as you get into this stage of a game like this where you're seeing you know, deeper spots in, in the quarterback roster, as far as reps go, I mean, is it tougher for these guys because they may not be getting anywhere near the same level of reps, and so they get thrown into the game? might be a little bit difficult for them to get started. Especially here for a freshman who's coming in here late in the game. You're not getting a ton of reps in practice, so be curious to see how much they decide to throw the ball, run the ball here on second down, first to 15, I should say. And I, I wonder if, if Coach wants to try and put the offense in position to go down here, maybe put your kicker in a position to maybe try and get a walk-off winner. Although there's, you know, part of coach probably is thinking, I just want to 
get out of here healthy in two, two minutes and about six seconds. Well, we, we just saw there, Derek Davis was a little slow to get up. Appears to be okay, still in the game. Yep. And it's a second and 10 after the five yard run. Davis again, near the 27, stopped by Nick Lappy. Money linebacker with the tackle to force a third down. Ninety seconds left to go, and what has been a fun day of football here from Acrisure Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, also the home of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Today, it's the home of the Pitt Blue and Gold game. Davis again. This time near the 35 of the 34, cut down by Buddy Mack. And he is just shy of a first down. Actually, they will give him a spot, it looks like, for the first down. At least that's one of the indications from the officials. Yes, looks like that will be a first down to keep this thing moving. 50 seconds left. Let's see Lynch put it in the air here. Take a shot. Another handoff. And it, to the 36, perhaps, for Davis. Foster and Aiden with the stop. Rock continues to move. And now we'll have a timeout here called. Let's see Lynch sling the pill here. An opportunity to go get him in field goal range. Oh, absolutely. I mean, hey, how many times are you going to have a chance to get on the field this season as you know, with a, a roster with seven quarterbacks? I mean, these opportunities may not be plentiful for David Lynch. No, there's no doubt. I'll tell you, Derek, it's been a fun day, fun game. I mean, the first half kind of went quick with a lot of running. Wasn't a lot of big plays, but this second half has been... Very exciting. Of course, the highlight, the Philip O'Brien pick six. That really turned the tide in the scoring in this game. Now it's a one-point contest with a blue up to 33 seconds left to go. And a timeout called by the gold side. Lynch back to it. And now we'll have another timeout called. This time it'll be called by the defense and the blue team. Well, Derek, it's a cat and mouse game down here on the field. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like, it's almost like let, let's see what you show and then we'll call a timeout and we'll make an adjustment. Lynch in the shotgun. Another handoff and to the 35-yard line is Davis after the stop by Nakai Johnson. We stop the clock here, and we'll have another timeout called by the Gold Squad. With 17 seconds now, they start the clock back up. Could be the final play of the game as the handoff once again to Davis. Foster makes the tackle, and that will do it. The blue team wins it 33 to 32 over the gold in the spring blue and gold game for Pitt football. And at least for the moment, it appears mission accomplished for Pat Narduzzi.